Welcome to our five-minute Bible study. We're in the book of Romans. We're looking at Romans chapter 12. Paul is beginning to tell the believers in Rome, this is how you should live as those who have been saved by grace through faith. He told them to live as living sacrifices for God, totally devoted to God. He told them to be transformed by the renewing of their minds. And now as chapter 12 goes on, he wants them to understand that as believers in Christ, you are part of a new fellowship, a new community, the church. And you're called to help one another and to serve one another. And he says we should do that according to the gifts that God has granted to us. We're beginning to read to verse 4 in chapter 12. Paul says, For just as each one of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. Now we have different gifts according to the grace that is given to us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is in giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, lead diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Now notice what Paul says here. He says that as members of the church, as people of Christ, we really belong to one another. He says in Christ, we though many form one body. Now this is a favorite image of, of Paul where he sees the church as the body of Christ. He talks about this in many of his letters. In Christ, we are one body, but we have different parts of the body. That is, as members, we all have different roles to play. But he says, each member belongs to all the others. So, we are one in Christ. That is, we are one fellowship, one body. And we each contribute different things, but we do it for the good of all. You see, we're members of one another. So Paul says, whatever you can do for the others, do it in faith. Now he says, the thing is, God has given us different gifts. These are the spiritual gifts the Bible speaks of. God has given us different enablements or different abilities to serve the church. Now there's several places in Paul's letters where he talks about these gifts. One is here in Romans 12. He also talks about the gifts quite extensively in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. And he also talks about the gifts in the book of Ephesians, I believe it's in chapter 4. But he always says the same thing. He says we're one body and we belong to each other. So whatever gift God has given us, use it to help the body. That is, use it to serve the other members of the church. So he says, if your gift is prophesying, that is, preaching or proclaiming the word of God, then do it. You preach. If your gift is in teaching, then do it. You teach. If your gift is to encourage others, then be an encourager. If your gift is to give for the work of the church, then, then give. If, if you're a leader, then lead. If, if you're to show mercy, show mercy. Whatever gift you have, God has given it that you might serve in the power of that gift. Now, no one person has all the gifts. No one person has all the abilities. No one person has all the talents. Now, all the gifts are given to the church as a whole, because we're one body. But the individual members, we have differing gifts. So what we should do is evaluate ourselves, see how God has gifted us, and then serve in the manner of our gift. We need to know ourselves and know what talents and abilities and resources God has placed within our hands, and then use it for the good of the whole body, that is the good of the church, the good of the other members of the household of Christ. Paul says in verse 3 of this chapter, he says, Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather have a good sober judgment of yourself in accordance with the faith God has given you. In other words, don't be proud, don't be arrogant with the gifts you have, but understand what talents you have God has given you for the good of others. You see, if God has given you a gift, it's not for your personal Exaltation. No, no. He's giving you a gift so that you can serve someone else in the church. So Paul says, think of yourself as you are as a member of the body. Know what your gift is. Know what talent you have. What ability God has granted you. And then use it to serve others in the name of Christ. Use it to help others grow in their faith. 
Use it to help others be encouraged in their life with Christ. So we're one body, that is, we're one church. We're all connected to each other, and we're all meant to help each other, to serve each other. You know, in the biblical sense, there's no such thing as a lone ranger Christian. There's no such thing as a Christian who's meant to go out there and do it all on his own. We're, we're supposed to do it connected with one another. And we're supposed to use our gifts to help one another. And so Paul says, this is one of the ways we are living sacrifices for God. This is one of the ways we transform our minds. This is one of the ways we live within the will of God. We serve one another according to the gifts God has given us. Because in truth, we belong to each other. We're members of the body of Christ. And so whatever talents we have, whatever gifts God has given us, let's use it to benefit others in the church. Let's help them grow in their faith by the giftings God has given us. So, whatever gifts we have, exercise them in the faith you have in Jesus and serve others in the name of Christ. Amen and amen. Hope you have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you next time in our five-minute Bible study in the book of Romans.